Welcome back to U.S. Farm Report this weekend. All right, actually, USDA making really no changes to South America. But, you know, as we've seen South America get some rain, Joe, is the market focused on South America at all right now? So the crop in South America, the soybean pl- crop is probably two thirds planted in real time. They've caught the rains that they needed and the forecast is wet. So for the moment, there's no weather threat. But at the same time, you're not really into the heart of the growing season that will make or break the crop. I think if you fast forward a month and the forecast is still wet and the rains are coming, that's where you could start to take weather premium or South American premium out of the soybean market. For the moment, I'd probably argue that there's still some premium there. But uh, yeah, fast forward four or six weeks, if, if, if the trade is convinced that this Brazilian soybean crop is going to be 170 million metric tons or anywhere close to that, I think there's some downside risk in the soybean market. Okay, to follow up on that, Brian, do you think there is some premium built into the market right now? I do. I mean, I think we took some of the premium out when we got uh, to the point where we knew that the rain was going to come and they were going to get the crop planted. But I think there's still another level of risk premium uh, that they will likely take out, as Joe had mentioned, a couple months down the road, if it appears that uh, weather it looks good overall. And let's not forget, you know, we had some issues last year in Brazil, mainly in Mato Grosso, where there's a, a large portion of the production, about a third of it. And uh, they had drought conditions. And so we grew about 150 million ton crop. And that's debatable whether you're looking at USDA or some of the South American agencies. But uh, we have the potential to grow 170 million tons or more with a good crop down there. And with Chinese usage, roughly 9 million million metric tons a month, um, we saw that it took them to July this year with a 150 million ton Brazil crop to come to the U.S., so does that allow them to push out to next September or October if they have another 20 to 24 million tons of, of South American beans to digest? So I do think that there is another level of, of lows to ha- be had down the road, but they're going to wait until they're pretty comfortable with the idea that production is going to be there before they take that out. Joe, USDA, you mentioned China earlier, but USDA did also make some slight adjustments to China. What did they do there? Um, I believe this was the second consecutive month that USDA reduced its China corn import forecast. They went from 19 million metric tons down to 16 million. We've seen a lot of corn uh, sales out of the U.S. to unknown destinations as of late. I've been told that none of those have anything to do with China and USDA indicating as much today. Um, That's a a reduced program and it could come down a little bit further. Um, China's got a lot of corn in the country domestically. It doesn't appear as if if they're going to buy a whole lot, especially from the United States. Brian, cattle country getting some much needed moisture this week. Quite a big winter storm uh, heading across the plains. We saw a couple of them this week. Great news for them. But when you look at the cattle charts, I know you were watching closely and there are some signs that we need to be paying attention to. What are those? Yeah, and I'll try to paint a picture of it, but essentially last week we had the October live cattle contract expire. We had the uh, October feeder cattle contract expire, and we made some new highs for the particular move, but that was on a Thursday, the expiration. Then on a Friday, the December contract becomes front month on live cattle. November feeders become front month. And what ended up happening was with some week closes on Friday last week, we forged an outside week lower or weekly reversal on a weekly continuous chart. So that's item number one that gives us a little concern that momentum has turned. Uh, So on Thursday of this week, we had cutout value sharply lower uh, that had futures down sharply. And what it looks like to me is that if you look at a weekly chart continuous, so it's always showing the front month contract, we just made a right shoulder on a potential head and shoulder topping pattern. That would be valid for both the live cattle and the feeder cattle. Um, And so coincidentally, the projection of that that topping pattern would send us to what would equate to a 38% retracement of the whole rally from the 2020 lows to this year's highs. So there is some good downside potential. The funds are extremely long right now on both fats and feeders. So I think you got to be thinking risk management on, on these, uh, on these uh, markets right now. Brian, a proud Marine. This Veterans Day weekend, I just want to say thank you so much for your service. Yeah, I appreciate that. And happy uh, 249th uh, birthday to all the Marines out there. Brian, thank you. Joe, thank you so much for joining us this weekend and helping us digest the latest crop progress report. Okay, stay with us. We have a lot more to come this weekend on U.S. Farm Report. 